All right, welcome to the first of its kind, World Changing Manufacturers Network. Lisa Ryan has her ears to the ground and her heart in the game. Get ongoing education and new connections right here with Lisa and the Manufacturers Network. Buckle your seat, listen, and spread the word. Here's Lisa. It's Lisa Ryan. Welcome to the Manufacturers Network podcast. I'm excited to reintroduce our guest today, Darren Mitchell. Darren was with me a couple of years ago and I figured it was high time to have him back because as president of Mitchell Industries and chief marketing officer of the Manufacturing Masters uh, platform, he specializes in developing learning platforms that first and foremost meet the team where they are and give them the things they need to do in the next five minutes to move business forward. I am so proud to be part of Manufacturing Masters, and Darren has all kinds of great information to share with us today. Darren, welcome back. Hi, Lisa. It's always good to see you. Okay, so I know you have all kinds of new things to share, and if people missed your episode, just give us a a quick um, Cliff Notes version of your background and what led you to doing what you do. Perfect. Always appreciated. So in the last 25 years, I owned a global manufacturing business. It was bought two years ago. And the frustration that I always had in growing this business is I was always looking for someone to say, hey, by the way, in this one particular thing, this is what excellence looks like. It felt some days like it was always trial by fire. And in a leadership position, you had to be all things to all people. So after I sold that business, we created the Manufacturing Masters platform in which don't, for your listeners, don't get this confused with long form learning. It's not going to school. You're not gonna come out with a PhD. What it is we've done is we went into battle tested industry experts and said, listen, for this one particular thing, could you tell me what excellence looks like? Can you give me the bullet points? Because literally I'm about to go into a meeting and I am not prepared. So what we want to do is meet the manufacturers where they are. We currently have almost 6,000 users or manufacturers signed up. We have 150 experts. Most of them are from North America. And basically what happens is the manufacturer and their staff can sign up to this Netflix type platform find exactly what they're looking for. And within five minutes, that expert's going to say, here's what excellence looks like. Here's some pros and cons for this one particular issue. I always go back to my go-to for logistics. We have Chris Nadal from North Carolina. How do you negotiate with a trucking company? And that is something so niche. We want to make sure that they have that information when they're seeking it. So that's the basis of Manufacturing Master's And we're very glad to have you on the platform because you are in a category that is extremely popular with the people we have signed up using the platform, that culture and people and training and skills development are always number one and two on the list. So we're very glad to have you on the platform. Yeah, it's fun to be there. And it's so funny because I know that you have so many videos on there that talk about specific ways to do things technically, but it really all comes down to you can have the best technology in the world, but if you don't have the people that you, that know and trust you and want to work for you, uh, developing that workplace culture, it doesn't really matter. So it's nice that you incorporate both of those because I know you have lots in, of different categories on there. And there really is something for everybody. Thanks. I appreciate that because like I said, I suffered for 20 some years of going, <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> and I have to act like I know what I'm doing. So having someone on there to say, listen, if you're having trouble recruiting, here's five solid ideas that don't have to break the bank and it increases the level of trust within your organization. And and those are things that I'm still learning along the way from some of the experts like yourself that we have on the platform that I'm going, wow, I was doing so many things wrong over the years. 
One of the things I want to do for you today and your listeners very quickly is go through, we're now two years old, almost two years old. So we have some data and I think data is really important. It's, I know it's important for your listeners and it's become much more important for me watching what some of the trends are with some of the users because we collect that aggregate data that we can show what the viewers care about in real time because we're watching on an aggregate level, we're watching the material that's being consumed. So we have basically uh, three types of users and think a typical customer is between five million and a hundred million dollar company. That's a typical user that we would have, but we do have some very large companies signed up that are 200 million and we have a few that are 500 to a billion dollars. But the typical user doesn't necessarily have the in-house skills or departments or professionals they need to help get that business to the next level. So we currently have intermediate users which show up every couple months. And just to share with you an interesting story, just in December, a user reached out, an intermediate user reached out and said, hey, watching some of these videos, can you recommend some experts to us? We think we may have a lawsuit coming up. Mm. <laughs> and I went, okay, what an interesting way to start a conversation. Mm. So we, we, over 15 minutes, delved into what are the real problems within the business. And because we had the expert experts on the platform, I was able to say, here are three unique experts you will need along your journey. You may want to start with this one to take care of the immediate fire. You may want to move to some culture training in the middle. And then you may want to look to some policy and implementation and by the way, we have experts in all of those. I'll even forward you some extra videos of experts you may not have seen yet. And again, it's a way to bridge that gap to say to those manufacturers, you're not alone. We have regular users. Some have signed up all their staff and said, just use the platform, which is great. And then we have some super users, which I got a very interesting email last month. And most people would think this is negative. But the email said, please delete these users from our manufacturing master's account. These two people no longer work here and we no longer want to give them access to our learning platform. Interesting like, question that, for you. That, that made my day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. You think about when it comes to what employees want. Investing in training is always one of the top things. We think that it's all about the money. But no, they want to be heard, they want to be appreciated, and they want to know that their employers care enough about them to invest in them. So what are some of the best practices that you're seeing when it comes to your clients who are signed up for the platform to encourage their workers to go ahead and take advantage of the information that's out there? We do regular information sessions with the manufacturers. That's what we do on our side. And we also make it really easy for them that they can even send us a list of employees that we sign up. What they're doing with it is what we're seeing internally is a really good example. Today, you've become a team lead. We have a ton of videos on team lead training, how to promote female team leads within your organization. And that information is being put directly in the hands of the people who need it, which is very exciting for us. And we're watching these videos being consumed by the organization because you're probably aware it's just because you became a supervisor doesn't mean you have all the skills necessary to train that next supervisor. So the fact that they can within five minutes go, oh, somebody actually showed me what excellence looks like because I've been here for 38 years and I guess I'm still here, so I'm okay. <laughs> But nobody ever took the time with that individual to show them what excellence looks like, just like me, trial by fire. Okay. So what else have you learned as far as the trends that are coming up? So if we look back at 2022, which we almost got a full, we got a, a half a year, 2022 was nothing but people and supply chain management. Like those were the two. And if you think back on it, we probably understand why. 2023 was more, I don't want to say a normal year because we're still trying to figure out what normal is. But if we were to look across 12 months, 
we see the information that's being consumed on manufacturing masters almost mirrors what I believe is happening in that business. So if we look back at the month of last February, we have a lot of leadership and risk management being consumed by that business. And if you think about why is that happening, because that's the time they're reaching out for that information, it's because that's when they're doing their implementation and year planning. If they're on a financial fiscal year, they're getting ready for that plan for the year. And then if you look at the month of March, you see a lot being consumed in financial controls and safety because it appears they want to implement this new plan. And then ironically, you head to April, most of the data that's being consumed is around communication, which is being transferred into HR and training for the rest of the summer. So that you're watching the information being consumed, what they need, where they need, when they need it. You're watching it being consumed in real time. That it's one of the reasons I'm very proud of this is, is they have that information there. One of the things that, cons I don't know if it concerned me, but one of the things that really stood out to me is last September and October, the consumption switched to where mental health and well-being shot up. And mm. that may be a very deep conversation for governments who support manufacturing, nonprofit organization, entities that support manufacturing. But there was a cry for help last September and October from manufacturers saying, we, we need help. Like, executive wellness was one of the top videos during those months mindfulness and these are things we don't normally associate with manufacturers but you could definitely see that last september and october manufacturers were reaching out for help and again one of the things that we can show any one of our partners is this isn't a survey we took six months ago we can do pull this data daily so again, what you don't want to do with a manufacturer is say, in the month of February, oh, we're going to come in and do the following things because that's maybe not where their heads are at. Because manufacturers tend, if they're anything like me, tend to think about the problem at hand and a little bit of firefighting. So it's always good to meet them where they're at, especially if we're looking at this being a more typical year in manufacturing. Any thoughts yeah, on that, Lisa? Yeah, you know, the, yeah, the really interesting thing that I see on that, because I have the ability to look at the chart that you have here, and I know it's audio only, so you're doing a great job of explaining what's on there. But I see in August, it was a lot of the emphasis was on sales and marketing. And I thought, huh, so now they're looking how to end the year well, because that's right before the, the last quarter begins gearing up. So it's just really interesting to see. And then the mental wellness and being going into the end of the year, we have the holidays coming on, we had school starting again. So people preparing to go into that. So it's just really interesting, those ebbs and flows of what's important at what time and going back to the mental health and well-being, this is a conversation that is newer to manufacturing because it's not one that we really thought about in the past. But if we want to attract the best talent that's out there and keep them, these are some of the things that are really important to pay attention to. And I know there is just a, a wealth of information that's out there and especially on this platform. Thanks. And I think just talking about mental health we as leaders in the manufacturing and business space sometimes have to take a step back and say, sometimes work is safer than home. <laughs> you don't know yep. what people are going through. We, we do our best to create a nice, safe work environment for our employees. And again, just realizing that sometimes work is that one lifeline they have to communication and resources. So the organizations that recognize that and spend time doing that, uh, you're going to inevitably grow and attract better workers showing not in words, but showing in actions how you care for your employees. Yeah, that, that's such a good point to have. Not only the safe place, 
but that's the relationships that you have. That's the friendships that you have. That's the manager or the owner that takes that extra five minutes to say, hey, how you doing? What's going on in your life? How's the wife? How's the kids? How's the husband? Whatever it is that is happening, because that may be the only time that they have. None of us know what's going on really behind the scenes. So I just really appreciate your bringing up that point because a lot of us take that for granted that we have a good home environment, but there's a lot of people out there that just don't. Mm. Uh, it's interesting because I've, I've learned a lot from another one of our experts, Elizabeth Eldridge, who is a certified mental health practitioner. And one of the things she was teaching, and she has a video on it on the platform, is how do you start that dialogue with a coworker? Because <laughs> you have to, something's wrong. What is the, the healthiest way to start that dialogue? And then where does it go from there? Because the worst thing you can do is open a door and then walk away. How do you create that system? That person is now on a continuum of help that they know is available for them. And D, uh, stigmatizing the because uh, you have supervisors within manufacturing who are going you think you're screwed up what do you think i have to deal with it you're going, we have to work on our language we're, we're all humans we all have stuff to deal with but right. we want to create an organization where it's safe to have those conversations because again like i said in some cases work is more structured and more safe than homeless yeah when you think about the fact that in a manufacturing environment, a physical disability is something that we can see and we accept and we are aware of. But when it comes to mental health, the, the, you don't see that on the person. And what you want to say is, you know what, suck it up, buttercup, put a smile on your face and get back to work. You depressed? Do you want to see depressed? It's, no, it's a thing. And we have as leaders to understand that our employees need so much more. So that is just such a great um, you know, resource to learn more about it. And again, there's a place for participating in an event and watching that big name speaker like yourself on stage. It's incredibly important because that creates that aha moment. But it's also important to have someone like you on a Sunday morning when someone's going, now is when I'm hurting, I can actually get a little piece of Lisa. And I know that sounds odd, but yeah. that's when they may, they may need you the most. And right. what I'm happy about is it's on a phone, which we know is in someone's pocket. And we can say, listen, don't think this is hopeless. There is best practice out there. And we want you to be comfortable knowing what that conversation is before you seize up and fold your arms and say, let's just, let's put this on the back burner for now. No, there is help and resources out there that can you can access today. And like you said, five minutes. I think mine are primarily around five minutes. I think I got a little wordy on maybe one or two of them, but they're all less than seven. So you look at, say, is it worth me investing five to seven minutes of my time, in some cases more, depending on the experts that are doing the program, to solve a problem right now, or to at least have an idea of where you're to go next. So observations that I have from 2023 is that manufacturers want what they want, where they want, when they want, and how they want. <laughs> Again, I mentioned it briefly before, but I would be very careful coming in the month of February and talking about something they really want in July. Again, we usually plan what I would, I want someone to argue with me out there, but as a manufacturer, we tend to deal with the fires at hand. So making sure that they give them what they need, when they need, where they need it. Secondly, is that for manufacturers, continuous improvement, people skills and leadership are always gonna be number two and three, always. So when we look at the data, it's not like one sank, they're always high ranking in the information that's being consumed by the viewer. I would suggest that on a go forward basis, the only thing that may affect that is if we have another global incident, maybe ships are trapped in the Suez Canal and uh, supply chains are backing up, we may, may have a bump where someone's now immediately concerned about how do I get my shipments into the port of Baltimore because uh, I, I don't want to go to LAX or LA anymore. Then we may see that going forward. Uh, but the most continuous, steady information that people are looking for is continuous improvement, people skills, and business leadership. 
And again, when the company is in need of change, that's when they're seeking the help. So those are generally the observations that we see in the data monthly from 2023. And I have some predictions for you. And these are mine. And maybe if you want to meet again a year from now, you can tell me if I was uh, flying a kite or <laughs> nasal. <Okay. laughs> but one prediction that I would have for 2024 is that we're going to see a bump in digital transformation. I was in a college in Ohio and the robotics program, most of the students were all going to the Honda plant. <laughs> That's what happens. You become a robotics student, you go to the Honda plant. Okay. But when I'm in smaller towns, those robots are now in some of the five and $10 million businesses. Mm. The AI is now in the five to $10 million business. So instead of my prediction is instead of going to the, the big workshops or the big trade shows and going, okay, this is tech that's coming down in the future. My prediction is we're, we're going to see a lot more in that in practice because now manufacturers are watching their neighbors use it. So that old farmer mentality, if they see them getting ahead because it's no longer Star Trek, it's now, hey, wow, this is real, it's affordable, it does what it's supposed to do. We're gonna see a, a bump in the consumption on the platform for more of that digital transformation within the business. Okay. Second thing is companies are gonna look for new ways to connect to their staff. We're some organizations, I was speaking with one in November, they have 500 employees and they said, we don't know where everyone is. <laughs> so literally, we're big, we have three locations, we supervisors are, we're not quite sure if they're doing best practice because we're growing. So they're going to look for new ways to connect in hopefully a meaningful way to their staff. I'm excited about it because it's one of the other products that we provide. Again, people getting information from their phones. It's not ideal. I love human to human contact. It's just that you can't always have human to human contact. We need to have that other resource available when we need it. And again, we're going to see the continuous improvement people and business leadership remain strong for 2024. So those are my predictions on what that the chart will look like for aggregate consumption for 2024. Like I said, the only thing that would bump that is if we see shipping vessels backed up in the Suez Canal and people are starting to go, ah, now I need to think about my supply chain again. And I think the really important thing to go back to is the fact that this platform is available on your phone. Because so many times we get used to, I mean, you and I are on a Zoom conversation on my laptop. I'm looking at you full screen. But I think about how many hours I spend scrolling and watching YouTube videos and going to things that are on the phone. And when you're looking at especially the younger generations that want to have that immediate access, they may be a deskless employee, so they don't have access to do the training on a computer. But if they're at their lunch break or they're just hanging out and they want to have a quick question answered to be able to take something that's in their pocket right now, go to the platform and in five minutes, they're going to be more knowledgeable than they were five minutes before that. So just the mobile technology part of it is so important in, from a training uh, standpoint. So yeah, I hope manufacturers make more money they streamline their business and anything we can do to help them get out of firefighting mode so they know they have choices, I think is a good, that would be my wish for 2024. And again, if they have to show resilience in a different part of their business this year, they're going to be more well-equipped to handle that resilience they need to show. Okay. So if people were interested in continuing the conversation with you or uh, looking at Manufacturing Masters as an option for their uh, 2024 and beyond training and development, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? All social media platforms, and we do have some organizational partners. So even if they're Googling us, you're going to see some of our organizational partners pop up as well. But yeah, look for us on social media, but any way you can get to us. I think I put my cell phone on there. We're very approachable. All right. Darren, it has been wonderful having you back on the show. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Lisa. Keep up the good work. Thanks. I'm Lisa Ryan, and this is the Manufacturers Network Podcast. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Manufacturers Network Podcast. Do me a favor and share this podcast with your friends and colleagues so we can grow this network and connect more fantastic folks just like you. You can either send your buddies to the website at manufacturers-network.com or share the Manufacturers Network podcast on your LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or wherever you and your industry friends hang out. The bigger and faster we grow the network, the stronger and deeper the community will all have. Thanks again, and I appreciate you.